I am going to be demonstrating how to complete exercise three from chapter three. It is asking us to draw a floor lamp. The view that we are drawing of this floor lamp, lamp is the plan view. It tells us in the directions that we have quarter inch spokes that start at a 45 degree angle and are 90 degrees apart from each other. It is hinting to us that you use an angle construction lines and then offset them one eighth of an inch of each side of the spokes in order to achieve the quarter inch spokes at 45 and 90 degrees apart from each other. So we wanna keep this in mind when we begin to draw the spokes, which are these items that crisscross each other. But to get started, the first thing I have already done, is started a new drawing, set up my units, and prepare to draw what we need. So just to verify that my units are set, I'm going to go over to Drawing Utilities, look under my units, and I see that the architectural style or type is set. Click OK, and I'm ready to begin drawing. The first thing that I do see is that we have a circle. So the circle states that it is one inch diameter from the inside. This is the largest circle that I'm going to be drawing first. So I'm taking my circle command, finding a spot on my drawing space. I'm going to type in D for diameter because it told me that my di diameter is one foot. So I'm going to type in one foot, press enter. I see that this here is the lampshade. And at the top, it tells us that the lampshade has a thickness of a quarter inch. So I need to double this line. And to do so, all I need to do is use my offset command, which we learned. So I'm going to select offset, type in my distance, quarter of an inch, press enter, select the object to offset. I'm not offsetting it from the inside because we already have that inside diameter of one inch the outside thickness is a quarter inch. So I'm gonna select outside of the circle and left click to end the command, to stop that and enter to end the command. At this point, I am ready to begin to draw my smaller circle is what I'm gonna to choose to draw. There's a lot of ways and a, a lot of orders in which you can begin to draw this, but I'm just gonna show you this way. So I see that my smaller circle has a diameter of two inches and it lies directly inside of the larger circle. It is also appears to be in the center of the larger circle. So because it's in the center and I need to know exactly where the center is, I am just gonna go ahead down and check and make sure that I have my O snaps or on snap turned on. And just to make sure that I also have the circles turned on or the center point, I check and I see that the center point is turned on. Now it's off and I'm turning it back on. So I can easily find the center of this circle. So I'm gonna use my circle command, come to the center and it does not populate where I am located in the center. So I may just wanna hover around any of the rim of that first circle. And I can see that the quadrant turns green and then the center gives me an X. So X marks the spot. So that lets me know that this lies the center of the larger circle. I can left click to select that area and then begin to either move my cursor or mouse and type in the distance or the diameter. So I'm gonna type D for diameter it tells me that my diameter is two inches, so I'm gonna type in two inches. Press enter. So now I have a circle in the center of the larger circle, and it is two inches in diameter. But there's also a smaller circle in the inside of this circle. So I'm gonna press enter to go back into my, my uh, circle command because I was already in the command, so instead of going to the top, and selecting the circle icon, I can just press enter to repeat it. 
And once again, it's asking me to find that center point. So again, I go and I find X marks the spot, left click, type in D for diameter, and the new diameter for the smartest circle is half an inch. Okay. So I check and see, that, okay, everything looks good. Those measurements were correct that I input it. So now I need to draw these spokes. The hint tells us use an angled construction lines and then offset them eighth of an inch apart for each side for the spokes. So I'm gonna to go to my construction lines. Select construction and I want it to be an angled line. So I'm gonna press A for angled. And it's asking me, what is that angle? So the first one is 45 degrees. And now on my screen, I have 45 degree angle construction line. At this point, we can pretty much tell from the drawing that it is placed in the center or it is a line running through the center of our circles. So since all of our circles have the same center point, we can go to X marks the spot and click once it snaps into place, we can left click. And then press enter to end the command. Now if I zoom in just a little bit there, you can see that it is going pretty much across the center mark. So it is a good thing to have that O snap on. I'm gonna zoom back out here. Now you can do this one or two ways from here. You can go ahead and do your eighth of an inch offset right away, or you can go ahead and move forward to placing the next construction line and then do your, come back and do your offsetting which is what I'm gonna to choose to do. So because I need another construction line, looking at my drawing, going in the opposite direction, I'm gonna press enter to go back into that construction line command. In doing so, I wanna specify that it's at an angle, so I'm gonna type in A, press enter. Now it's asking me to specify the angle. Well, we already did one at 45 degrees. So let's say we do the other at 45 degrees. If we do that, our angle is not gonna change. We can do negative 45 degrees to go in the opposite direction because we know that when we are taking measurements on in AutoCAD, they're measuring in a counterclockwise. So if I type in negative 45 degrees, negative 45, let's see what we get. Now you have an angle going in the opposite direction and this matches up. So negative 45 degrees and it's also showing that my angles are 90 degrees apart and how we're gonna check that is as such. So let's first go ahead and place your triangle, your angle right in the center. So you find that midpoint, left click, and press enter to come out of the command. I wanna show you one quick thing here. If I was to press enter to go back into my construction line and press angle because I want an angle line, they did tell us that they are 90 degrees apart. So I could use that as a reference to the 45 degrees in which we already are aware of. So it asks you, enter the angle of the construction line or the reference. So if I had it typed in R and press enter, and I wanna reference my new line to an existing line. So that existing line was the first construction line we drew at 45 degree angles. And I would just select that line. And then it would ask me, okay, you have the line that you wanna reference it to. What angle do you wanna go from it? I wanna go a 90 degree angle. And then I press enter. And there we have a construction line in the same direction going as the first one that we drew at the negative 45 degree angle. 
And if I was to place it on top, then as you can see, it lines up the same. So that is another way to use the construction line and if you ever have to reference one angle to the other. But moving forward, we now have our two construction lines drawn to create the X or our start of the spokes that is going through our floor lamp. But now we need to finish the directions. It says offset them 1 8 of an inch apart on each side. Each side is very important. So we will go back to our construction line. Again, that was our line, last command, so we can just simply press enter to repeat it. And then we're gonna select the offset. So we're gonna type in O. And we're gonna specify that distance. That distance is 1 8 of an inch. And then press enter. And select the line in which we would like to offset. Now specify the side. So we wanna to come to both sides and I'm gonna zoom in of the original line that was drawn. And remember, when you're in a, this command, you can continue to use it. So we wanna to move to this construction line here, offset on one side, go back to it and offset on the opposite side. And then we can press enter to come out of the command. Now everything looks pretty good here. We're all set, the lamp is drawn. Now at this time, we can just do some cleaning up of our drawing. So cleaning up means we have to erase lines that we don't want. Um, and to do so, we can use multiple commands. So I'm gonna start with zooming into my drawing a little bit. And I'm gonna go and select my erase tool. And in these spokes here, as you can see, there is no middle line. So if these were 1 8 apart, now we have a full quarter inch distance as it is shown in our directions. We have 1 quarter inch in four places. So to do that and to show that, we need to go ahead now and remove those original construction lines because we don't need them. So in my race, erase command, I'm just gonna Click on these center marks. You may have to zoom in to get to them. Press enter and now they're deleted. Then there's nothing going through the smaller part of that circle. So I'm gonna trim and clean some things up. So I'm gonna select my trim command and there are a lot of things that I would like to trim. So, excuse me. Select that trim command and I'm gonna use a cross window to go ahead and select a lot of pieces. And just now, when it says trim selected items, I'm just zooming in here. I'm gonna select everything that I want to trim. Oh, press enter. Now you can select everything that you want to trim. Do it the opposite way, select that window there and trim, there we go. Now, and then press enter to come out of the command. And I've just now cleaned up the inside of that smaller circle to the lamp. And now I can just zoom out and just do a comparison. Yep, no lines run through there. And then next I need to just go ahead and cut off these spokes where they need to be cut off. So I can simply select trim. They do not go past the first circle. So if I go ahead and select the first circle and press enter and I can select the tr items I would like to trim. And just go ahead and simply begin clicking everything that I want to trim out. I may have to zoom out and then zoom back in to move my drawing around. Or I can simply go over to the pan command, select it, 
and then go back and begin trimming. Then zoom out and press enter. I'm going to go here to pan, kind of move my drawing over. And now we have completed this floor lamp image. And they are, um, this one is a mirror image of the one that is on your textbook for exercise number three.